because of some of the things I've seen that mm -hmm. took place in the last election a couple of years ago mm -hmm. with our current administration, uh, Ludi Wallace being the president, current president now. And uh, I kind of backed off, you know, but I still believe that the NAAC can be power empowered mm -hmm. if you got the right people in there that's not afraid to step up and stand out mm -hmm. and challenge these different issues. It's mm -hmm. so much happening in our community, in our society, you know, people are, are, are being pushed out of their neighborhood and their community, pushed way out to the outskirts of town, somewhere like the old folks you say, somewhere out in Plum Nelly somewhere, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's nobody saying anything, you know, and, and it's like the community, our, our community, the black community is like, man, we don't have a voice. Who, who's going to speak for Who's going to represent us? So my thing is, let's empower the NAACP. And I think that Dr. Uh, Chenault here is, would make the perfect uh, president mm -hmm. of the NAACP's Nashville branch because of, of the tenacity that I've seen in her, you know, since she's come on board and become a part of the Nashville branch of NAACP. I knew her from years ago. I uh, actually went to school with her brother, her younger brother and stuff, and we were really good friends throughout the years and stuff like that. And uh, I didn't know at the time that she was as tenacious as she is, but mm -hmm. from being in, in some of the meetings at the executive committee meetings and stuff and, and, and seeing her, you know, push the issues and the things like that, you know, I, I said, well, you know, when I found out she was running for president, I said, yeah, I'm on board. You know, mm -hmm. I really want to see that happen. And of course, uh, I'm seeking a position as third vice president of mm -hmm. the NAACP because, I, you know, like I say, somebody got to say something. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do something. And apparently what we have there, we got some good people there, but it's everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. and if leadership is weak, if leadership is ineffective, if leadership is disregarding the fact that it is leadership, mm -hmm. then leadership needs to be changed. And I think it's time for a change in leadership of the NAACP so that the NAACP can be empowered and be the NAACP mm -hmm. that it's supposed to be and stop playing these games. Very good. And Dr. Chenault, we've got about a minute and a half before the end of this segment. And so you think that uh, you have uh, what is necessary in order to bring this organization together. Say something about that. About something. Yes, sir. I believe that I have what is necessary to be a leader, a strong leader in the, in the Nashville branch in AACP. I have worked tirelessly for the last five years. I have assumed a number of positions in the NAACP. I have exerted uh, energy in trying to get issues out front so that the community as well as the establishment can understand that regardless of what the matter is, it's not about race, it's about right. And there are a number of issues that have confronted the community in the Nashville area that have not been, as a uh, pastor had said, has not really been vented mm -hmm. and discussed in our community. So very much so, I believe that I am a strong leader and I can lead the NAACP into a successful year. Very good. What we'll do now, Dr. Chenault, is to take this second uh, final commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. When it comes out, you, you, nobody will ever be able to tell that you're rattled. You don't look rattled to me. I can't, I can't help it. Uh, can't no, just, this, this might be your first experience. It is. So, and it, it and is. you have to admit that this is an unusual mm -hmm. kind of experience it and is. whatnot, but we, we, we're making it through, and so we've got 10 minutes. So uh, what, what, are, what are we going to do? So what time? do you want to talk about uh, um, in the last 10 minutes? See, when, when we come back, we'll have 10 minutes. And so what you want to talk about what voting that's that's talk about the suffrage or you want to and, and, and what you're planning on doing in reference to the suffrage and except whatever you wish to yeah. talk about. And, and, yeah. and you started off and Pastor will help, you know, give you some information in reference to what he has yeah, to say. And then Yeah, it will all come together. OK. And how you can take this you know, mm -hmm. yeah, organization okay. to the next level. OK. okay. Yeah, just. Thank you. Welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Uh, Tallulah Chenault.
uh, from uh, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and Pastor Kay Walker, who's also a member of the uh, National Association, and his granddaughter who's with us. And this, I think, is her first television experience. And uh, she'll learn. And I think that uh, what we're trying to do today is to not only empower the community, Dr. Chanel, but to talk about some of the ways that is the suffrage, how that might be, uh, we might be able to do that. So let's use the last few minutes to talk about voting and the suffrage. Okay. Uh, voting, as we know, is extremely important in our community. Our visibility, our empowerment, all depends on whether or not we register, get our documents in order, and vote. Voting in Nashville, Tennessee, regardless of whether it is the school board, whether it's Congress, our senators, and our representatives, is extremely important. A number of policies have been passed in our council meetings, in our Senate, that are not beneficial per se to the African-American or black community mm -hmm. or the community of those who are impoverished. Mm -hmm. And the only way in which African-Americans and other minority groups are going to truly, truly receive social justice mm -hmm. is that we vote, mm -hmm. that we make a, uh, an appearance at our council meetings, mm -hmm. that we vote, especially in this presidential election now, as, as a branch secretary of the NAACP, we are bipartisan, okay? Mm -hmm. We cannot actually go on camera or say who our community should vote for. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking our community to do is look at the issues, think about the issues, mm -hmm. not what people are saying now, but what they've said a month ago, what they've done a year ago, two years ago and vote for your best interest. Mm -hmm. That is what we are going to push at the NAACP and it will be a year around project mm -hmm. and program to make sure that we get out and we vote. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor, I think we've said on many occasions uh, on this particular show that in Nashville, I think somebody said at one time that only six or seven percent mm -hmm. of the population actually got out and voted mm -hmm. uh, doing uh, any uh, <laughs> Uh, election. Yeah. And so if you can organize people in such a way that you can get 20, 25 percent of the uh, community to participate in the suffrage, you can almost carry every election uh, from that perspective if only such a small number of people actually vote. What do you think about that? That's, that's very true. I mean, you know, our, our, our voice again, Dr. Haney, is, is in our vote. You know, we got to be able to get out there. If you bring people together and, and if See, politicians, they go where people are voting. You know, they, they service areas. They look at areas where, you know, where, the, where they're getting percentages, large percentage of the vote. They look at a zip code and they're getting a, a small percentage of the vote. Then, you know, they're not going to focus their attention on that particular area right there because it's saying, well, the people out there, the people there, they're not concerned about themselves. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if an uh, organization like the NAACP uh, we'll put together a consistent year round uh, voting registration drive, you know, not just waiting until an election come up and then, you know, two months before the election, here you're out there registering people to vote. Mm -hmm. We'll make it an ongoing, consistent thing, keeping it uh, always in the forefront of the people. Mm -hmm. Then the people will start begin to see the value in, it, in voting, you know, and that's what we have to do. We have to keep it in front of them. Uh, another thing that, in addition to all of that, the NAACP, you know, we have to be uh, visible, mm -hmm. we have to be vocal. And we have to be valuable mm -hmm. and we got to show up that we have value in, in this community. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a granddaughter right here, you know, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's got a future, you know, and, and I'm the one that's got to be looking uh, mm -hmm. forward toward her future mm -hmm. and making sure that there, if she has uh, a, a, a legitimate uh, grief or mm -hmm. gripe concerning something, that injustice that takes place in our society mm -hmm. uh, towards her, that she's got an organization that she can go to. Mm -hmm. And that's what the long... Uh, NAACP has had a long-standing reputation as an organization that our people could go to mm -hmm. if they were having issues. And, I'm, mm -hmm. and, and let me be clear about this. The NAACP is not just an organization just for 
uh, African Americans or black people, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, for mm -hmm. people of color. Everybody is a color, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Everybody, I don't care what race you are, you're a color. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's for everybody, and everybody can benefit from the, uh, the work of the NAACP. Mm -hmm. But the thing we got to get to right now with this local branch of the NAACP is putting some power in it. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you know, you have people say, well, you got to bark and no bite. Mm -hmm. This branch don't even have a bark. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and, and so in a real sense, uh, just to sort of make people aware of uh, the history of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, I think that you, we've had an opportunity to talk to many members uh, from that uh, organization, and uh, you've uh, been responsible in a real sense for bringing a large number of people to us dealing with the National Association. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Chenault here yes. is here primarily because of uh, your influence and with the organization. And so uh, with Dr. Chenault's leadership and the commitment on the part of others that, and I think as she indicated, that you want to make uh, registration the, a year-round activity, not to register only uh, two or three months before uh, the time of election. And if you can get that as a, a, as a ingrained idea among people who ought to vote, then I think we'll be all right. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't want to just, just, just lock in steadily just on the vote thing because there's so many other things, issues that's plaguing our society and stuff. I mean, with the police brutality and all kinds of things, discrimination in housing, all these different things, there's so many different committees uh, in the, in, within the branch of NAACP that need to be empowered with people that have a con the concern about what's going on in our, in our community. So I'm saying to people, if you've got a concern about what's going on in our community and you've met and you've met and you've met and you've got all these great ideas and these strategies, but yet you don't have a power source to, to put them into it and to make it happen, then we're encouraging you to come and be a part of the NAACP because the membership part of the NAACP P has a power base within itself mm -hmm. because when that executive committee make uh, presents an issue, it has to be uh, ratified. Am I correct? By the yes. membership. Yes. So yes. we need members, people to join and, and, and get behind this thing. And I believe that uh, Dr. Chenault will make uh, the the right leader to lead the NAACP's mm -hmm. Nashville branch into this next level of, uh, of growth and development, so it can be a actually actually benefit the people that we serve in this community. And what I would like to add to that is, for those of you, our life members, our members who have decided uh, in the past that you no longer want to be members of the NAACP, give us another chance. Give uh, the NAACP